Hi, I'm Luminous Star. Welcome to my channel, Luminous Star. For you guys and gals who are current subscribers, mwah, thank you so much for your subscription. Also, thank you for supporting me and keeping this channel, Luminous Star, active. Today's video is about brain fog. One of the things that happens due to trauma is brain fog or some cognitive issues or cognitive impairments. So today's video is going to be a little tough for some to digest. So mind the description box below, particularly the disclaimer. Okay. The disclaimer is there because some information in this video will be disturbing to some and may even cause triggers. So I certainly would not want you to experience any triggering. However, today's video will be disturbing to some viewers. So mind that description box below. At the end of the video, please go ahead and hit the like button. Also, if this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to Luminous Star once again. However, I should hope you become a subscriber, therefore joining the Star family. We would love to have you. I would love to have you. At the end of the video, please go ahead and like and share. Also, if this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, I certainly hope it's not your last. Now, having said all that, let's get on with the video. Earth, our home, incubator of life, through our lines of life. Brain fog. I'm going to be going over a few points, tools, and references as well as resources. Please check out the description box below for further details to the video. All right, point number one, brain fog can occur suddenly or become a gradual process, which could last anywhere from hours to years. Doctors cannot diagnose any client with brain fog due to it not currently being a diagnosis criterion found in the DSM-5. Next point. However, depersonalization disorder is a diagnosis criteria featured in the DSM-5, which is associated with the effects of childhood trauma and exposure to assault. Depersonalization disorder is one who suffers from a detachment of one's own body sensations and emotions, which social, occupational, and daily function can become very impaired. This diagnosis is challenging to detect due to many clients who have symptoms may have difficulty recalling traumatic and abusive events, doctors having minimum to no information of childhood trauma and the combination of other health issues such as depression, personality disorders, post-traumatic stress injury, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Brain fog. Next point, brain fog can be clustered with symptoms of depersonalization disorder due to brain fog being a dissociation tactic and not necessarily medically being recognized as an, dissoci as an dissociation disorder. Pause. The second point, I want to say that the symptoms here that I listed, why uh, doctors may not easily find uh, symptoms uh, recognizable due to other symptoms or a combination of other symptoms. I mentioned post-traumatic stress uh, injury. Okay. Uh, I can't find it right now. Where is it? Yes. Due to a combination of uh, health issues such as depression, personality disorders, and post-traumatic stress injury, I want to go ahead and include compulsive post-traumatic stress injury or complex PTSD. So doctors may not be uh, easily or they may have a challenging time recognizing that a person may be suffering from a depersonalization disorder or uh, being dissociative. Okay, now I want to say something about dissociation. I think that it is a tool that can work for someone and not necessarily against them because when certain um, traumas 
happen or traumatic events happen or very stressful situations happen, a person has to quickly find a coping mechanism or a way to deal with what's going on at that moment, which one may find very uh, stressful and very traumatic. So, you know, because things happen in life. So when a person is triggered by a particular incident that may be, again, traumatic and or very stressful, that person right there on the spot, they must find a coping mechanism to deal with that which is happening at that moment. Another thing, when a person is triggered, if they do not learn or if they do not know how to uh, regulate themselves, in, in other words, uh, calm themselves down, self-regulatory processing is what takes place if the person knows how to do it. But due to layers of trauma, some people uh, forget how to practice self-regulatory processing. Okay, self-regulatory processing is when a person can easily, well not easily, but they know how to calm themselves down in a very stressful or traumatic situation and or traumatic situation, such as viewing someone that they love and care about being assaulted or actually uh, dying, witnessing an accident or being a part of that incident, you know, an accident. A person at that moment, they're put on the spot. They have to quickly process what's going on, self-regulatory processing, and they have to learn how to effectively deal and cope with what's happening. I hope that makes sense. So a lot of things are going on and dissociation is a coping mechanism, which I find sometimes is effective and can work for a person instead of against them. So, okay. For the sake of time, I'm just going to move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next point. Plus be personality and narcissists often plant negative programs into the subconscious mind of their children. The result is often that these children grow up possibly developing personality disorders such as cluster B personality, cluster A personality, or cluster C personality. But they also suffer trauma. Next point. There are several results due to childhood trauma, such as dissociation, personality disorders, neurosis, and complex post-traumatic stress injury and post-traumatic stress injury. Okay, so pause. I just want to say something about the second point quickly. There are several results due to childhood trauma. Like I was saying in the previous slide, there are a lot of things going on when a person is faced with a very traumatic event or a stressful situation a lot of things can happen because they're put on the spot they can easily be triggered so they have to figure out quickly what coping mechanism will work for them so part of the coping mechanism that's developed to work through the layers of trauma is dissociation personality sometimes the person develops the personality disorder or some form of neurosis or mental illness complex post-traumatic stress injury or post-traumatic stress injury see all of these things could be coping mechanisms or result to childhood trauma okay so i just wanted to point that out next point children who must find coping mechanisms to deal with the hostile environment of narcissistic and various forms of abuse often suffer emotionally spiritually psychologically and sexually due to several layers of trauma before he or she turns 18 years old. Often the coping mechanism is interwoven with both defense and survival mechanisms. Pause. So basically like I was saying here in the second point, when a child suffers child types of abuse, such as narcissistic abuse, sexual molestation, okay, even physical abuse, the result is that the person or the child they will suffer emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, and sexually, okay? So due to several layers of trauma before they turn eight, 18 years old, <clears throat> pardon me. So by the time they're 18, the individual or, or the child or the minor who suffers from uh, various forms of abuse, such as narcissistic abuse, see, they're trying to cope and deal with that. 
And often what happens is that the coping mechanisms consist of both defense and survival mechanisms. Defense mechanisms and survival mechanisms, they're not totally the same. Defense mechanism can be when a person puts a wall up, okay, because they're afraid of getting hurt. Whereas a survival mechanism can be someone who is quickly triggered and they could easily end up uh, uh, not only hurting others but hurting themselves. It's a survival mechanism. So this is beyond putting up a wall. This is a person who is choosing possibly to stay away from others, right? It's not just they're putting a wall up because they're afraid of being hurt. This person sometimes can, due to a personality disorder, such as a cluster B personality, the survival mechanism is to keep that false self image uh, alive. So they will do things to hurt not only themselves, but others in order to survive. Again, the cluster B personality, for example, the survival mechanism is to keep that false self image alive. That means they will usually use more self-destructive or abusive tactics or methods to do so. Whereas the defense mechanism sometimes is not that deep. Next point. Symptoms of forgetfulness and other cognitive impairments, feelings of de detachment, and dissociation of normally familiar relationships, mind, emotions, and one's own body is not uncommon of those who have suffered childhood trauma. Pause. So basically the symptoms of childhood trauma is forgetfulness, other cognitive impairments such as forgetting, you know, chronic forgetfulness. Feelings of detachment and dissociation of normally familiar relationships such as family, friends, you know, uh, co-workers. Dissociation of or detachment of one's mind, their emotions, and their own body is not uncommon. All of this can be due to childhood trauma. So when I speak of brain fog, that goes right into the forgetfulness and other cognitive impairments. See, when a person is uh, suffering from, or they have, or they experience brain fog, it can come on suddenly. Or sometimes, like I said in the previous slide, it can be a gradual process. For example, a person who used to be very good at math due to cognitive impairments or brain fog, temporarily or maybe for a long time they may forget how to do math they may do the basic math but even the basic math may become a little bit uh challenging to him or her so this can be very uh frustrating for that person brain fog can again have a person tipper temporarily or for a very long time forget how to do certain things which they must use their cognitive uh, abilities to do, such as doing math. So it's almost like suffering um, amnesia of certain abilities, cognitive abilities. Earth, our home, incubator of life, through our lines of life. Tools. Increase your knowledge on brain fog, depersonalization disorder, and disso dissociative disorder, okay? Next tool, remember that your life has purpose regardless of traumatic experiences. Third tool, invest in you for a change and find out what your options are for constructively dealing with brain fog, trauma, and the effects of narcissistic abuse. All right, here are the references and resources Please, again, check out the description box below and click on these links here. And I think a lot of you will find the information very helpful. Okay, now I want to go ahead and thank everyone again for watching. Thank you for your time. And I certainly hope wherever you are on the planet, you are doing well and taking care of yourself. I'm Luminous Star. Till next time, take care.